monetary policy i'm going to continue with this monetary policy the transmission mechanism that we just saw but now i'm going to go ahead and see what happens with the slope of the lm curve so let's go ahead and consider an equilibrium market where i'm considering that initially the is and the lm curve are meeting what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and have a common is curve but once i'm going to go ahead and draw a flat lm curve and then due to monetary policy equilibrium the lm curve is shifting to the right and in the other case i'm going to have a, a steeper lm curve so please see here this is lm1 and this is lm2 that i have the shift in the lm curve is by this amount this is the shift rightward shift of the lm curve now to begin with my initial lm curve is going to be here at the initial level of equilibrium although it is going to have a steeper slope now so this is my initial lm curve and then i'm going to go ahead and draw a another lm curve with the same distance being covered but it's going to be steeper so this is going to be lm1 and this is going to be lm2 if we look at the equilibrium then of course the initial equilibrium is where is meets lm which is at e but once there is a shift from lm1 to lm2 for the flatter lm curves the equilibrium goes from e to e dash but for the same shift for these lm curve the new equilibrium goes from e to e double dash so you know because my lm curve is steeper what i see is that the change in the income equilibrium level of income is much more as compared to the case where my lm curve was flatter so steeper the lm curve more is going to be the change in the equilibrium level of income this is what is here the steeper the lm curve the larger the change in y for any given increase in the stock of money so the increase in the stock of money is the same the shift in lm curve is also by the same amount if you see this this arrow this is the rightward shift of the lm curve which is the same in both the cases but what is happening is that the corresponding change in y that actually goes ahead and differs therefore open market purchases are more effective in increasing y if money demand is not very sensitive to interest rate money demand is not very sensitive to income how do i know this well if i talk about my lm curve what is the equation of the lm curve the supply of money is equal to the demand of money so this is supply this is equal to ky minus hi if i talk about the equation of the lm curve it is in the i y plane so i'm going to say change in ms by p is equal to k dy minus h di i know that along an lm curve there is no change in the supply of money this is zero so i put this equal to zero and i get k dy minus h di so from here i get h di is equal to k dy so i get di by dy is equal to k by h this is the slope of this equation the slope is steep you know my lm curve is steeper if my slope is more perpendicular by base is more so how do i know perpendicular by base is more when k is high or h is low this is when my slope would be steeper 
So K high means I am sensitive to changes in income. And H low means I am not sensitive to changes in interest rate. So this would be is sensitive. So this would be is sensitive. Money demand is sensitive to income, is not very sensitive to the interest rate. Now let's finally go through the transmission mechanism in detail. So we started by changing the real money supply. In our case, through an open market operation, the government purchased the bonds. And by purchasing the bonds, the government was able to increase the supply of money. Due to this, there were some portfolio adjustments. So whenever basically there is an increase in the supply of money in the economy, initially it causes portfolio disequilibrium. Portfolio disequilibrium which means that the initial money versus bonds that people hold with them, that changes. When the supply of money increases, we have to somehow try and increase the demand of money also. And of course, you know, we were saying that initial, we know that the supply of money plus the supply of bonds has to be equal to the demand of money plus the demand of bonds. This is the equation that we had got from the Walrus law. Now, please understand that this is increasing. So the other three being constant will cause a disequilibrium. So there are some portfolio adjustments. What people do is that the moment there is an increase in the supply of money, they have some excess money. They want to go and invest in some assets because of which what we see is that the interest rate starts changing and the price of the asset also starts changing. So usually when people start investing their money in the assets, what happens is that the price of these assets would be pushing upwards. Now what we have to do is because the supply of money has increased, we have to do something with the demand of the money. So to increase the demand of money, we have to make sure that there is a decrease in the interest rate because only when interest rate decreases people will not find it useful to go and invest in any asset they would want to keep the cash with themselves in hand so because of this we start adjusting the interest rate actually interest rate adjustments are immediate because of which the demand of money starts increasing now, this leads to an equilibrium in the asset market that is equilibrated. But because the interest rate decreases in order to ensure that people hold money with them and they increase the demand of money because the supply of money has increased, what really happens is that the investment starts increasing because investment is inversely related to interest rate. So when interest rate starts decreasing, investment starts increasing. Now, investment is a component of aggregate demand. It is C plus I plus G plus NX. So when investment shoots up, the spending of the people also increases. Whenever any of the component increases, there is an increase in the aggregate demand. So now what happens is that increase in investment means income of people is increasing. At the same time, when income of people increases, going back to the equation of the demand of money, we know that this is KY minus HI. So when income increases, the demand of money increases, but we cannot further afford the increase in demand of money. Demand of money has already increased to ensure that it is equal to the supply of money. So the additional increase in demand of money has to be compensated. 
and to reduce the demand of money we start shooting up the interest rate so then we adjust the output and we start shooting up the interest rate this entire mechanism is known as the transmission mechanism it is very 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 important from any exam point of view so how do we write the transmission mechanism in steps let's quickly make a table for it step 1 we'll do as we did in the uh, diagram so first of all there was an open market operation the open market operation was to purchase the bonds secondly when the government purchased these bonds it increased the supply of money in the economy so let's just take this okay so the open market operation meant that there was an increase in supply of money third the increase in supply of money caused a portfolio disequilibrium to again bring an equilibrium in the portfolio we wanted to somehow increase the demand of money to increase the demand of money the best step was to reduce the interest rate because when interest rate decreases then people will think that it is better to hold cash rather than invest so they want to hold liquid cash now after this we saw that the increase in demand of money was because it was due to the interest rate actually the interest rate had to be decreased a lot people had to you know you had to give a disincentive to people to not invest anywhere so interest rate had to decrease a lot actually it was over shooting of interest rate over shooting can be in positive direction or negative direction in our case interest rates decreased by a huge amount when this happened when interest rate decreased by a huge amount this caused an increase in the level of investment by the firms because interest rate was lower in the economy so sixth this meant investment by firms increased but this investment is a component of ad so this meant that it increased the overall spending of the people and the income of the people now when that started happening then step 7 because income of people increased they again wanted to hold more money so the demand of money increased further now we had to curb this further increase in the demand of money so to curb this further increase in the demand of money we went ahead and we reduced sorry we increased the interest rate so that the demand of money decreases so 
earlier there was over fall in the interest rate later the interest rate increased by some amount but the total effect of these two things step 5 and step a was that from initial level there was a decrease in the interest rate and there was an increase in the equilibrium level of income this entire process of how we move this is known as the transmission effect so you know this this entire process of how real money balances changes how it affects to change in the equilibrium output and the equilibrium interest rate through fluctuations in the portfolio adjustment this is known as the transmission process